Okay, so uh, let's start off fun. I mean, we're gonna pull this whole game's gonna whole day's gonna be pretty damn fun. But let's do this to begin with. Um, so got some stuff for you guys today. So uh, last night was paper draft night. So uh, I did get to go play paper draft. Got outvoted again. So instead of doing M nineteen, we did um, chaos draft. Uh, for me, that was triple Dominaria packs and other people doing other things. Uh, let's take a look, just show you the deck that I ended up with, and then um, talk a little bit about that. Where is my actual stupid paint? Come on, paint. There it is. Okay. So, uh, just this first page here, these are the creatures of the deck. Got past a fairly late Elthame Druid as a... So my, my, my first pick, I guess I should say, pack one, pick one was Shaylai. Uh, voice of Plenty, so a 3-4 white green flyer. 3-4 white flyer, rather, with 6 mana to put plus 1, plus 1 counters on all of your creatures, including Shaylai, and it gives you and all of your other creatures Hexproof, which is pretty damn good. Uh, a Legendary from Dominaria. That was pick 1, pack 1. I think uh, the deck ended up being fairly... It ended up getting a fair number of white and green cards early, so uh, I got past the Leif El Elite Elfheim Druid, who's the 0-2 taps for one green mana or taps for two green mana if you're using it only on a kicker spell. We got a very, very late white main lion, which is a one white, one other, two, two flash creature. When it comes into play, you're forced to return one of the creatures you control to your owner's hand. It will default to itself if nothing else is available. Guardian of Pilgrims, which is a two, one white, one other, two, two. When it comes into play, target creature gets plus one, plus one to end of turn as just weak filler. Uh, Elena Ward Envoy as uh, one green, two others, three, two creature um, with some slight mana fixing, expensive mana fixing. I can pay one green, one colorless to create one mana of any color uh, for just generic creatures and mana fixing. Filigree Familiar was a really, really solid card. This card outperformed. Um, this is three mana artifact creature. It's a two, two. When it comes into play, uh, I gain two life. And when it dies, I draw a card, which is pretty damn good. McKinney Patrol. I drew this card like every single game. This is a 3-mana 2-3. Um, when it comes into play, all my creatures get Vigilant, and if I ever play another card that has Ally as part of the, uh, I don't know what this is called, part of the creature type, then my creatures gain Vigilance for the turn. Basically, it's just a 2-3 body. Creatures are pretty weak up to now, if you've noticed. The strongest creatures being um, the Filigree Familiar and the Elfheim Druid. Uh, Core Hookmaster, fairly late pickup for me, but fairly good. One white, two others for a two-two. When he comes into play, I tap one of uh, tap a creature, and that creature doesn't untap during uh, my opponent's untap phase for one turn. So a delaying creature. Um, more about that in just a minute. Got past the Star Crown Stag as a one white, three others, three three. When I attack with it, I tap one of my opponent's blocking creatures or one of my opponent's creatures before they can clear blocking. A Tokrop Elite, which is a one white, three colorless, two-two flyer that you may exert it, and if you exert it uh, when attacking, all your creatures gain plus one, plus one to end of turn. The Murasa Ranger, this card really outperformed my expectations. It's one green, three colorless for a three, three uh, creature, and it has landfall, and landfall is an ability that triggers when you play a land, it does something. And this creature, what it does when you play a land is if you pay one forest and three colorless when you play a land, it gets two plus one, plus one counters on it. This card was really good. I was shocked by how good it was. Shaylai, we've already talked about. Uh, Pima, the Aether uh, Seer. This card was decent. This is one green, three colorless for a 3-2 creature. Um, I get three um, Aether energy token things when it comes into play, and I can spend three of them uh, to force a creature to block on my opponent's team for a turn. And then Chartooth Cougar, which is one red, five colorless for a 4-4 four, four, creature with uh, two abilities. The first is I can pump its power for uh, one red, and the second is mountain cycling, which means I can discard it from my hand as an instant to search my deck for a mountain and put the mountain in my hand. If you guys notice, the creature quality of this deck is really low. Um, Starcrown Stag is good, although I never drew the card. Uh, Marasa Ranger is good. Shayla is good. Uh, Pima is decent. It's like kind of a um, utility, but it's very expensive. It's a 3-2 for 4. Same with this guy. He's uh, 3 for a 2-2, two, two, but decent. A lot of these are just kind of generic bodies. So um, creatures weren't great. Creatures came late to me in this draft. My creatures were all basically second and third pack, except for like Shaylai and like one or two others. Uh, all right, let's keep going with this. We're doing our, 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 doing a recap of a real-life draft. Yep. So... Um, 
Next, spells. These are the spells I ended up playing. Picked up a Jousting Lance uh, at almost no cost. There's almost nothing good in the pack. Uh, Jousting Lance is an artifact for two mana to cast, three to equip. It's a uh, equipment and it gives plus two plus zero in first strike when I'm attacking or first strike on my turn or something like that. Beat of Resistance was amazing. This card outperforms. Card is nuts. Um, although I would love some clarification in chat. So Feet of Resistance is one white other, one white, one colorless. It's an instant uh, target creature gets a plus one plus one counter and gains protection from a color of your choice. What a fucking nasty combat trick. So good. I, I, I drew that card a lot and that card every single time traded up in value, up in tempo. Like, just so good. And then permanently impacting the creature you buff is amazing too. Um, I played an Elemental Uprising. Uh, I want to get through the card list and I'll talk about how some of the cards performed. I've never seen this card before. A lot of these cards I've never seen before because this was Chaos Draft with a bunch of sets I've never seen. It's a one white, uh, one green, one colorless instant that takes a, a land and turns it into a 4-4 elemental with haste uh, until end of turn. And uh, it must be blocked this turn if able. Um, so you as an instant, you can do it as a surprise blocker. For ambushes, you can do it as an attacker that is forced that you can trade with a creature that you want to kill. I thought the card looked decent when I picked it up. More on that later. Got a Hunt the Weak. Hunt the Weak is a one green, three colorless sorcery. Put plus one, plus one on one of your creatures, a token, and then it fights another creature. Uh, on Sarah's Wings, this was my... Um, I had some hard picks uh, this game. I picked on Sarah's Wings uh, over a... Uh, I believe it was over Varix. That was pretty painful. Um, but I did do it. I think it was pack three. Or maybe, oh yeah, god, there was two really hard picks and I keep getting them mixed up in my head. I passed an Eldest Reborn in pack two. And I passed a Varix in pack three. And I ended up playing a Red Splash too. But um, the cards I got for those passes were a Blessed Light and an On Stairs Wings. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how that turned out in terms of how the draft actually went. This is on Sarah's Wings. It's an a enchantment aura for three colorless, one white. Gives a creature plus one, plus one, flying, vigilance, and lifelink. Uh, picked up a wild onslaught, which is for three colorless, one. It's an instant. It gives all of my creatures plus one, plus one counters permanently and gives them two plus one, plus one counters if I kick it for an additional four colorless mana. Unfriendly fire is four colorless, one red. Deal four damage to any target. I think it might be player or creature. I don't think you can hit planeswalkers. Uh, but it might be any target, I'm not totally sure. But either way, it's at least face or a creature. Blessed Light is four colorless, one white as an instant. Uh, exile target creature enchantment. Uh, Iona's Judgment here is like a massively worse Blessed Light. It's four colorless, one uh, white, the same mana cost. It's not an instant, it's a sorcery and does the exact same thing. Exile target creature enchantment. And then the final card, uh, the final spell in my deck was Haphazard Bombardment, which for five red, one, uh, five colorless, one red, you put four counters on your opponent's cards, and at the on the, each of my end steps, I roll a dice, and uh, one of those things with a counter on it dies. Um, and that would do that until there's only one left. So it's going to kill three of the four eventually. It just takes it like four turns to do it. Um, mana base was pretty easy. I ended up with six forests, six plains, three mountains, a memorial to glory, and a Celestina Guildgate. Uh, so this was basically ended up being seven sources of green, eight sources of white, and three sources of red. And if you remember this creature, this creature also had mountain cycling, so really, if I needed it, four sources of red. All right, um, games themselves. All right, chat, I, it's hard for me to monitor chat on this computer while simultaneously doing anything else. So let me just take a quick look. Anyone else uh, having comments here? No. Okay, cool. Well, let's talk about the games themselves um, and how the cards performed. Uh, and what I do, just, oh, I didn't show you the other card. So these are noticeable, notable sideboard cards. It didn't quite make the cut, but I had available to me. Um, Raptor Companion is a 3-1 white creature for one white, one colorless, just a generic body. Sidewinder and Naga, uh, one green, two colorless, a 3-2 that has bonuses if you have deserts, which I did not. So basically just a 3-2 generic creature again. Pit Fight is an instant for one red or one green mana and one colorless. And it makes uh, one of my creatures fight another creature. Uh, broken Bonds are a sorcery speed uh, enchantment hate. It destroys either an enchantment or an artifact and allows you to play an extra land for the turn. Crash the Ramparts is a pump spell for two forests, one other, giving 3-3 three, three and trample. Uh, New Squad Commandos is a 3-5 five for 5. If I attack with two other creatures, it gets plus 1, plus 1 and untaps. Um, Urban Evolution 
Uh, I drafted two of these. These are uncommons. They were fairly expensive picks in terms of what I gave up for them. They are five mana, one green, one blue, three colorless, draw three cards that I can play an additional land this turn. And then there's a Navigator's Compass, which I got fairly cheaply as uh, potential mana fixing. And uh, what is this called? Unknown Shores, which is uh, it's a land that comes into play. You can add colorless to your mana pool, or you can pay one and tap it and add a mana of any color. Um, my plan pretty up until pretty late into the draft was still to be splashing blue. I just didn't make the final cut of edits for these uh, cards. Um, Sideboard-wise, I did end up sideboarding in Raptor Companion and Sidewinder Naga quite a lot. Uh, I think there was one game I had New Squad Commandos in, uh, and one game I ran Pit Fight, and one game I ran a Broken Bond, but I never made any of the rest of these into the deck. Um, round one, opponent played a blue... Oh man, what were the secondary colors on that? Uh, I think it was blue-white with a red splash control deck with big creatures and some big flyers. Um, Games went fairly smoothly. He didn't draw a lot of his big flyers, and I beat him down pretty uh, uneventfully. Uh, he ran a lot of counter spells too, so there was some play around dealing with counter spells, but overall not too bad. Got some really good value out of uh, this ridiculous spell, Feet of Resistance. For you guys with protection, what exactly does protection from a color give? So if I, if I, um, does it remove enchantments on that creature? So if I'm like a, if I'm a black creature. And my opponent has cast. If I'm a cre if I'm a, doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter what color creature I'm. If I'm a creature and my opponent has cast a negative aura on my guy, like that minus two minus two aura from Ravnica, and I give the creature protection from black, does it remove the aura or not? I know it reduces all the damage from those that color sources for the turn to zero, but I'm not entirely sure what else it does. For example, can that creature still be blocked by that color? I'm not sure of all the things protection does because it's not a mechanic I've encountered. Um, but when I go through the creature list, the Hookmaster outperformed. Card was amazing. Um, it just delays aggro decks. And my first round opponent was a uh, blue-white control flyer deck. But my second and third round opponents were both aggro decks. One was mono black, and the other was a Boros aggro deck. So Hookmaster did serious work there for just delaying my opponent. Um, the patrol was just a 2-3 body. The Guardians was a 2-2 body. Both did work, a lot of trading. Filigree Familiar was very good versus control decks. Often traded and often bought me some time with health and cards. I never grew the stag, just never played the card. Um, the ta the ta crop Elite uh, was decent as a little flyer that chipped away. It's kind of annoying to pay 4 for a 2-2 two -two flyer. That's basically all it was all game long, but still, flyer was good enough to win me some games, especially with Lance. Uh, the Ranger was great. Ranger single-handedly won me, I think, two games where um, in a low resource environment like Limited, where you're not drawing a ton of cards most of the time, having a creature that grew every time I played a land, granted I had to pay quite a bit of mana for it, was really relevant. Um, I did get Shaylai down twice or something like that. Didn't win me any games in of itself, um, but still, I think, drew removal or drew counter spells or something similar. Pima did okay. Um, I killed a Valdic with it. It was probably the most notable target that, uh, that Pima killed with her ability, forcing a block. That was decent. The Cougar was surprisingly good. If you look at my creature base, my creature base is super bad. I picked up this Cougar fairly late. I wasn't excited about a 4-4 four for 6, um, but I needed creatures at the top of my curve that didn't suck, and I liked the fact that it had the flexibility of fixing my red mana. So maybe I didn't need a 4-4, four four, but maybe I wanted to activate one of my extreme uh, my red removal spells, in which case it would have been okay. I did cycle it once for a mountain across the course of the night, um, and I also played it twice as a 4-4. Four four. Um, so it, it did see some play, and it was actually good. It was actually pretty solid. Uh, Spell-wise, Elemental Uprising was much harder to use than I thought it was going to be. It really requires you have three lands on tap, not two, because you have to have the one to also do the blocking if you're doing it that way, or the one to do the attacking. I like that it was an instant. I did get to ambush once, although the ambush ended up trading, so I ended up two for wetting myself with that. But it was four damage I didn't have to take to the face. Um, I never got to use it to force the opponent to block ability. I actually kind of forgot about that. I think most of the night there might have been some scenarios where it would actually have been good. Um, but it doesn't target, it doesn't say a certain creature has to block, it just says it has to be blocked. Sat in my hand a lot and didn't do a lot. I don't know if I'd play that again in retrospect. Maybe, is the answer. But I chose it over a different combat trick. I chose it over the plus three, plus three combat trick, because my expectation was this would give me more surprise value and get me more card advantage overall. Uh, Feet of Resistance massively outperformed. Um, protection turns out to be very, very strong, even if I don't entirely understand exactly what it does. 
uh, but getting protection from my opponent's creature so I take zero and then getting a permanent counter was amazing as a combat trick. Jousting Lance showed up all the time. I won at least two games because of Jousting Lance. Cards, solid, just solid equipment. Makes my shitty creatures who have uh, ETBs actually do things when they're a little bit later on the board. Hunt the Week wasn't amazing. Um, didn't have a ton of targets for it. It's the reason why I didn't end up playing Pit Fight, even though Pit Fight is also a fight ability, similar to like Ancient Animus. Um, I just didn't have enough powerful creatures to play it. A lot of my creatures are 2-2s two or 3-2s or 2-3s, and they often can't kill an opposing creatures without dying themselves. Um, but Hunt the Week was a little bit better. I think I maybe played it once all night or maybe zero times all night. It was pretty, pretty close. Uh, on Sarah's Wings, won me two games. As I said, two of my opponents were aggro decks, uh, mono black and uh, the red white deck, and Sarah's Wings beat both of those players just straight up. Uh, creature didn't end up getting removed. I ended up being able to race them. Um, a Vigilant Life Link creature is just nuts, especially when it's evasive. Uh, the card did serious work, outperformed what it normally does for me. Wild Onslaught was a card I uh, sideboarded out the most. Um, I did get a little bit of value out of it. Again, it's a surprise effect I like of that and the permanent, uh, permanent interaction with my creatures. I know it's better generally in a very wide deck, and my deck was not wide, so I used it basically as a combat trick that generated some lasting value. And versus both of the aggro decks, it came out um, to put in more creatures. I just ended up adding uh, Raptor Companion and Sidewinder Naga versus both of those uh, he heavy aggro decks just to have more chump blockers, uh, more more creatures to trade off in the early game. And Friendly Fire was fine. It was exactly what I wanted, a 5 mana uh, instant speed removal. I think I picked up uh, a couple good targets with it. I never went face with it. Um, but it was just sitting in my hand as removal. Blessed Light, same deal. Blessed Light was great. It killed a Baldic for me, a double enchanted Baldic, which is quite nice. I played Iona's Judgment a lot. It didn't end up being that much worse than Blessed Light for the games that I played, although in general I think it's quite a bit worse. And I played Half Hazard uh, Bombardment once, where I killed four of my or three of my opponent's permanents, uh, which was pretty great. It was a big value swing for me, but I think I was already winning the game without it, so maybe not that relevant. Uh, what else? Um, game one, as I said, your opponent one was a blue-white control deck. Uh, it went fairly uneventfully. I 2-0'd him. Um, he didn't seem to get his flyers when he needed them, and I just killed him with flyers. Um, match two was versus a mono-black uh, aggro deck with um, some low-curved creatures that did a lot of damage, uh, some menace, some uh, hand discard, and an Eldest Reborn and Chainer's Torment. Uh, first game was very close, and Sarah's Wings stole the game for me. Uh, basically, he allowed me to outrace his damage and kill him. Uh, second game was less close. Um, just kind of outvalued him creature-wise on that, stalled out his board, then killed all of his creatures and killed him. Um, that was also a 2-0 for me, um, which put me into the finals. Uh, finals were versus a red-white Boros deck. Um, game one, my opponent... I got Eldest Reborn in game uh, versus that uh, black player. That was the best thing that uh, Elfheim Druid did the entire draft, quite honestly, was be on the board when my opponent played on Sarah, uh, uh, played uh, Eldest Reborn, and then I could sacrifice Elfheim Druid to the Eldest Reborn. That was pretty glorious. Um, the third round, as I said, was versus Boros. Uh, first game versus him uh, was a Sarah's Wings game. No, it wasn't. Hold on a minute. First game versus him was not a Sarah's Wings game. It was, uh, he had a very early Valdic, and I ended up taking like 14 damage or something from Valdic with a double enchant on it, and ended up just killing it, I think, with Iona's Judgment, and then just valuing him out for the rest of the game. Uh, maybe stall the board and kill him with that. He had a pretty bad draw in game one. And in game two, uh, Sarah's Wings uh, managed me to let me come back from a low life total to kill him. I almost lost to a really, really annoying card. I don't know what the hell it's called. It's like a one white, it's a white creature. I think it's a one, one for one white or maybe a one, one for one white, one other or something that he could pay one white mana and tap my creature. And I just didn't notice it. Like he played it early and didn't use it for a while. And then like turn four or five, it was relevant again. And I'd forgotten that it did that. And I almost lost to him tapping my Sarah's wings creature, uh, when I needed the lifelink, <laughs> which would have been really stupid to lose to a card that I just didn't remember was there. Um, yeah, but I did end up 2 0 him as well, so that put me at uh, undefeated for the night. I went 6-0 and and took uh, took the win out of that, so that was pretty fun. Had a good night of uh, Magic, had a lot of fun with that. Uh, did get some packs as the victory condition. Uh, tried to sell them, but no one was interested. So these were my I got four M19 packs. Excuse the blurriness of the picture. 
but the four cards I opened out of that was a Bone Dragon, a Leonin War Leader, a Cleansing Nova, and a Banefire, which all things equal, I think this is probably quite a bit above average uh, for four packs of M19. It's like only like six bucks or something, but still, it was nice, nice packs when I got home. My wife opened them, and I, I blame all the good things on her. We blame everything on her while I'm using her PC, including good luck on packs. All right, anyways, guys, um, I know some of you enjoy the uh, the paper draft recaps, and I know some of you don't, um, but we'll be moving on back to Arena. Uh, let me know what you guys think, and uh, if you guys know how the protection thing works, I'd like to hear about that, too. My final record was 6-0. All right. Protection from a color means they can't take damage from the color, they can't be enchanted by the color, they can't be blocked by that color, and they can't be targeted by that color. Didn't know about the can't be blocked part. Okay. Debt. Thanks. That's actually helpful, draft mark. I appreciate that. So does it remove existing auras as well then? Uh I like three mountains in that deck. My mana was curve was really consistent all night. There was one at one point during the night where I was only on one planes and I would have really liked two. It stopped me double spelling. But other than that, uh, the mana base was really good. The problem with uh, counting Llanowar Envoy or that uh, land that I didn't end up playing, that uh, one that provided mana of any color, is the red cards I were playing were very expensive, right? They were six drops, and there were two six drops and a five drop, and I really didn't want to increase the cost of those to seven. So... Yeah, so I was worried about the cost of the spells. I wish I'd been able to fit those blue black, uh, blue green draw cards in as well. It would have been really nice for my deck, but it didn't quite get in there. So there's a chaos draft with a million fucking sets in there. I don't know beefy nuggets. All right. Was I the only person who didn't want Chaos Draft? Uh, no, there was another guy there who was also fairly new, or rather had only been playing since M19 who didn't want Chaos Draft either, but we were outvoted. Uh, what's my opinion of it? I mean, it it's it's fine. Like, I, I in some level, it tests my basic magic skills, right? Like, can I identify high power cards from sets that I'm not familiar with just by reading the text on it? That's okay, but the downside for me is I miss a lot of things too. I can't predict which tricks I'm going to be playing against. There's often abilities that I don't even know exist until they are played on me. It's it's stuff that it, it's more surprises, which means that variance gets me a little bit more for the chaos draft stuff. Which packs do I recommend buying if you're new to the game? You talking in real life or online, Zertle? AOE effects still happen to uh, protection guys. Is that right? I don't think so. Sounds chaotic. Yeah, it's fun. It was, I mean, I like, I like the, I, I do like, I do like them. They were fun. I mean, they're just drafts. The drafts are fun for me. Drafts are super, super fun for me. So, oh, online, what I recommend buying. Um, honestly, I recommend playing limited. Uh, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a fan of on MTG arena buying packs. It just doesn't feel good to me. It feels like to me, the most efficient way to get them is to be a little bit patient and instead to play limited. But if you're not doing well in limited, I can see that being a frustrating thing. For me, just like sooner or later, the limited stuff is going to generate all of the wild cards I need to generate all of the cards that I want. So, okay. Uh, what was the, what was, one more time, what was the acronym? Um, when you guys were telling me debt, debt is the protection acronym? Okay. All right. I think there was a mistake then. Because I think, uh, I think, I think my second round opponent would have beat me one game then, because I'm pretty sure I cast protection from white on one of my creatures that had Sarah's wings on it to protect it from being tapped from his Eldest Reborn, taking my tap creature out of the graveyard, tapping my Sarah's wings one, which probably means I should have lost the, the aura, but neither of us caught it in the moment. Feels bad, but I didn't really know how the protection mechanic worked, so I wasn't sure, so...